right so today's agenda as i said is a page object model j unit and assertions right so what i was saying earlier was the purpose of what we are doing actually is to test an application and to test an application you write a test and in a test you have always will have two things one is the operations the interaction like what you should do and second thing is the validation which is what you would get and you have to compare the actual value with the expected value that is also called as checkpoint also called as assertions so you have to put some assertion uh, for making your test case so what you see right now is a simple plain static method main method and inside this you have written some statements and these statements make use of what selenium library to interact with the browser but that is not enough uh, just mere mere interaction with the browser is not enough uh, what if you trying to interact with the browser and the browser doesn't respond the way it should respond uh, but then your script doesn't would won't say anything your script will maybe won't say pass or won't say fail what you want is whatever thing called as method whatever method we are creating it is supposed to be saying something if it does if it does do some as interaction and it the application is responding in an appropriate manner then your test case or method should say i am pass if not then it should say i am fail so these kind of things is what uh, constitutes our test case so that is what we need to learn uh next thing is uh, about how you organize your test cases uh, now there are different ways to structure uh, your test cases and and specifically more specifically what i am focused for today is about how and where you should be keeping these things these are called as locators right locators are the uh, you can understand it as a marker which identifies an element uniquely it's a label it's an address so it has it can have many names what i wish to call it but it is something which locates the element now by just keeping these locators here in the same file it is still okay it works right uh, but these approaches won't work for a project which is uh, which is supposed to or bound to be scaled that means right now you only have one test case let's understand this is a test case what if you have 5000 test cases and these uh, locators will be scattered across different class files and methods and what if something changes if the application changes then you have to go and make changes everywhere and this is not the right approach through right approach a right design pattern uh, from now onwards I, will, I would make use of this word called as design pattern um, this indicates how you should be writing or creating your code in a in a or how you should be solving a specific problem in code so there are few predefined design patterns uh, which have been given to us by whom by people like us who was developing uh, earlier and they encountered a problem and they solved that problem uh, and they said if you use this structure or this pattern for this specific problem your life will be easy and we have borrowed those uh, structures from those from previous our, our ancestors our code ancestors and those guys have actually asked us to use these patterns and that is what we will try to do today so to manage these locators we are going to make use of a specific design pattern and the design pattern also is also called as page object model okay now uh, it's not something design page object model is not something which is a library or or anything any of that sort it is it is just a design pattern that means you have to manage it will instruct you to maintain these locators in a specific file and then to interact with these locators you will have to create some methods and then you can reference that specific class create an object out of it and then access these locators right so the whole and sole idea about page object model is to remove them from your test scripts and keep it separately in a separate class file called as page object model file and all these will be residing there and from there you will make use of them so that is the whole and sole idea about page object model so that these are the two things we will learn first thing is give it a form whatever we have done so far we'll convert this into a test case format and second thing is we have to do this in a page object model format and then we will also be doing what we will try to put some assertion if you remember in the previous example we did this kind of assertion which is not good enough this is not how assertion have works because even when you run the code even if uh, the expectation is not right all it will do is just to print 
and print is not uh, by just seeing the log it is not considered to be a pass or fail okay uh, all right so any doubt so far before we before i start in what i just said no it is good now let let's begin so first what we'll do is first we will we will try to uh, give it a form of a test case we let's keep it this way here for now let's try to give it a give it a form of a test case so to first and foremost to give it a form of a test case uh, there are some existing frameworks available uh, you can make use of those framework libraries and organize your steps in a more test case oriented manner so the first thing you would do is you will go to your pom file and here you will add a library called a j unit okay now i think you have heard about uh, definitely if you have heard about java i think you must have heard about j unit j unit is very simple uh, thing it's just a test framework for java based projects uh, as i said as you see here it's just a library nothing else and what is a library a library is a set of classes which you can or reusable classes which you can make use of that's all libraries so same thing i have done here for selenium i wanted to make use of selenium and i am able to do it here the same thing i am doing with j unit the moment you add j unit here you have to go and refresh it sometime it happens automatically sometime it doesn't so you go to maven and do a reload project and the moment you do it if you expand your external libraries you should be seeing something called a j unit here if you're not seeing it that means you'll get an error here or maybe you won't see it maybe your code won't work so make sure once you add it you add it at the right place sometimes people add it anywhere and then they say it's not working i mean this won't work so you have to make sure that you are putting it inside dependencies tag inside this you have two dependency one dependency second dependency okay so once you do this and you do a right click here and you kind of do a maven reload project then you are good to go uh, let me create a separate test. Let me not disturb this. Let me create a separate test here. So I'll go and create a file. I'll say test script. Sir, please zoom the screen. Yeah, okay, I'll do. J unit. So I will make it bigger. Yeah, okay. Now, if you see, I have right now two test cases actually. One test case is there, this one, which is to just to enter my email id go to this specific url you see i'll go to this url and i'll enter my email id click on this and it should navigate me to the next page right this is my first test case my second test case is about registering so i'm considering these two as a separate different two test cases uh, in the first test case i have to register and second test case i have to do what i have to fill the form right so what I'll do, I'll go to my test script J unit. I'll create two methods. One is public void. Uh, I'll say test zero one. This is not any, I'm just, it's just a nomenclature. It's, you don't have to do it. You can give it any name, but it should be mostly be uh, uh, relevant name of the like, like what is the context of the test? What do you wish to test in that specific test? That should be the method name for better readability. So I'll say test zero one uh, register. Now, second test case would be public void t02 and there I would say fill the form, something like that. Right, so these are two test cases, but these are not just plain methods. I have to do something to make it as a test and that is what, that's the reason I would go and add here called as add the rate test. Now, add the rate test is nothing but an annotation. Now, whenever you see something written at the top of a method or on it down, this is a Java concept, all right? So whenever you see something called as like this, wherever you you see this, you I think you've already seen it with the in the case of override, right? We discussed this in when we were talking about overriding or in inheritance. So whenever you see something like this, it is called as annotation. The purpose of annotation is nothing but just a label. It's a labeling which a library is making use of. So it doesn't have any specific uh, specific code or any code doesn't run when you annotate something. It is just a marker or a label. And this label is provided to you by whom? JUnit. So JUnit has an understanding about what this label means. 
and based on this label it understands yeah, you understand that this is a test case and this is a test case which it needs to execute so that's the reason that's the advantage of having a junit framework this is how junit identifies a method to be a test method so if you annotate this as either a test and if you, if you don't do it here that means junit will be executing it automatically but it will not execute this one okay so this will be executed this will not be executed if you say at the rate test here also then the both will be executed because then junit will say okay i can see two tests i can see two methods and both the methods are annotated with a annotation called as at the rate test which signifies i need to run them so that is how junit understands what needs to be executed okay so annotation here in this sense or in all the senses is actually nothing but a label or a marker on top of anything it could be on top of a class a method or in even a variable right so at the rate test at the rate test i have written at the on the top of both the methods and this is how junit identifies these as a test case so now my first problem is solved now i am creating a test case right now the method which i had here was i was i wrote them inside main method right now from now onwards there is not going to be any main method in whatever we do we are supposed to be creating tests and all the tests are supposed to be living inside uh, methods and the methods will be annotated with add annotation annotation called as at the rate test so now onwards you will not see any main methods uh, and you should not be using them at all uh, so main methods are like gone now from from our discussions now once uh, i have this junit class here then the next thing i would do is these methods i have need to put something inside these methods right so i already have the steps so this is my first step isn't it so i will just copy it here i'll copy and i'll paste it inside my first test case so this was my first test case uh, let me remove these unnecessary spaces and and these things i think we don't need these now uh all right uh so these were my steps i'll only put two things i'll say my steps and then my this was my validation now the next concept here is uh by the way any question by so far you got it how to do it like you will first go and add it add your junit dependency here then you reload the project then you come here create a class then you to create two methods and then you start putting in steps here that's all we have covered so far okay uh, now the next thing is uh, you once you do the steps then you also have to put some validation so validation we have put here but this is not the right validation validation as i said when you run the test case that junit will run it and then junit should know what is the status of the test case and junit will not know based on the system printout lns right uh, uh, junit will not know that junit has its own way, way of uh, putting assertions and it has provided a library of assertions and you have to use that library to write the assertion statement so what i need to do here i need to check whether title after is equal to register if title after which i am getting at runtime so once i click do a click on that image which image this one when i do something here and i click on this the header here the title here changes to register right so that is what i am trying to do here so i am say i am saying title after driver dot get title this is what i am getting at runtime once i get this i am comparing this with another uh, comparing this with a text called as register and then if this is true then i am printing something if this is false then i am saying it is failed now i'll do this in a different way the j unit j unit way in a different style so i'll say assert and then i will say dot and then here i have lot of methods to put these assertions so i don't have to rely on if conditions to do it okay i can just simply say assert dot assert equals right assert equals then you, I, as i said there are many many methods assert equals assert not equals not same true so there are many methods available for you to try so i'll just say assert dot assert equals and here i will simply say title after if this is equal to register which is this one 
and I can also put a message here actually I will say uh, title matching now this only comes when your test case fails so the idea is very simple I put a message I'll say this was my expected this was my actual uh, no it's actually opposite so I have to put it here and uh, here you have to put expected and then here you have to put the actual which is this one oops like this what the hell uh, what did I do okay let me change it again right okay so now this statement is equivalent to this one so I don't need to put an if condition to do it so I'll just remove it so now what will happen my code is much much simplified all I'm saying is I will do these steps once I do these steps uh, then do this validation or assertion so assert dot assert equals title title matching assertion expected is register and actual is title after which is coming from this variable so if when this application is clicked upon in this step and at the very moment it will be capturing the title of the page if the title of the page matches with the register this time uh, it will say test case pass it will actually tell the j unit that test case is a pass if it doesn't match then it will say test case is a fail which was actually not happening in this case that is the difference i would like to highlight that this these statements are not enough instead of this these statement these statements will not tell you whether it's a pass or a fail it will just print the message which is not equivalent to it's a pass or fail what we really wanted was that our test case should be saying that it's a pass or fail and this statement actually does that so if i go and run it now and if you notice this time the run will be something like this run test script j unit if i just run it it will automatically will be able to know that this is a j unit test it will be executing the j unit runner right uh, my test case pass so my it's saying two test case pass why because it was a first test case and this is a second test case right now there's nothing in the second test case so it is considering it as a pass unless a assertion is thrown uh, now let me explicitly fail it what if if i just do this thing just to see if it is uh, it's still passing or still failing so if i go and run it So you see now the test case is a failure it is saying j unit comparison failure title matching assertion that is what this is this is the message it, it printed and then expected was this actual is register so i was expecting wrong value so that that is a, i like i explicitly intentionally failed it so i will just say register so what will happen now when at runtime title doesn't come as register then it will fail and it should fail because my expectation is that yeah it should fail if the title is not registered so that is why i put that is the reason i put here validation and this validation is working fine okay now the same thing i will do for do with the do with the this thing so i'll just copy it again i will put it here and uh, i'll again remove these values because i don't need it and uh, uh, now I this form is not actually completed uh, so there won't I will not be able to put some validations here because once I submit I really don't know what happens so I need to know first before what happens and then I will be putting some assertion at the bottom so I will not be putting it for now I will leave it for later because then I have to fill a lot of form, a lot of fields. So let's see if I have, we have time to do it. Sorry, what I'm writing. So it is a uh, uh, checkpoint or validation or assertion. In Selenium world, it's always called as assertion. So make sure you use this. So let me remove this one. It will confuse you. Uh, let me remove these. So this is nothing but an assertion is what you have to put here. Okay j unit assertion you have to put here 
okay uh, clear it was like i think it was dead simple it, it there is no rocket science here all i have done is instead of putting these here and that's what you have guys been doing creating main methods and all instead of doing this in main methods now i am doing this inside method annotated with at the rate test that is the only change i have done and the good part here is i got three three good things here one is uh, i have methods i have annotated with at the rate test and now junit executing it for me i don't have to have main method secondly i am able to put assertions right which is a very good thing because previously i don't have any assertion library uh, to use so it will automatically say test case pass or test case fail and the third good thing here is uh, is i can now run these test case from maven command line right so let me also show you that so i'll go to terminal or in case your case it should be uh, it should be your uh, uh, cmd and then you can run the maven clean install and it should also execute your test cases now there is a specific condition for that to happen your test name has or class file has name has to have a specific name only then it will be picked up i doubt it will be picked up uh, for now because i have not given right names to it i think it's doing something yeah it has picked up so if your name has a tst test there tst then it will pick it up so see i just ran maven command and it actually executed my test case right so there are that's a, another better thing happened just by making use of junit were it a simple main method it won't be picked up by J, by our maven um, uh, command line or maven tool since i have placed this inside my junit it has automatically picked up these two test cases you see it's telling me also it has picked up these two test cases it has opened the chrome twice so it has executed both the test cases actually okay so three good things happened here uh, any question before i move on to next topic hello akka satya here yes satya carry on yeah why we are doing uh, running this case from maven uh, is there any use case uh, we have like that? yeah so uh, in a real project uh, it always happen from maven it never happens from the command from here so i think all you have seen so far is then you write test case and you right click and do a run right it doesn't happen this way in real project in real project it always 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 happen from maven command line the reason for this is uh, you don't when you create your automation test pack you develop it in your local machine but you don't run it in a local machine for execution purposes it happens in a in a server and in a server you don't have any ide to open or manually uh, you don't open it and manually run it there are jobs there uh, the jobs of in the form of ci jobs or let's say tool is jenkins or jenkins jobs and jenkins actually is a is a tool which executes something it can execute it has a power to execute and in maven we have this facility to execute the test cases so uh, as i said you don't run it the software the ci pipeline tool run runs it actually and that is what that is how you do it you run you see maven clean install or maven install and as i said maven uh, i think previous class we discussed about maven maven is not just a simple build tool it can do a lot of things and out of those lot of things test cases execution is also one of them and it make use of a plugin called as surefire which is automatically added in it uh, you don't have to explicitly write it uh, but if you want to configure it or override it, then you actually write these build instructions here. Otherwise, you don't have to do it. Automatically does it. Uh, so this, these are plugins in Maven which is, are responsible for execution of the test cases. And uh, to answer your original question, you always run it from Maven. In the real project, you always run it from Maven. You never run it from actually uh, right-clicking and run. So this is the use case. That like this is the only way. It's not like you can also do it with from maven that is not something uh, which is not right statement maven okay. is always used to execute a test pack yeah thanks i got it in the coming days we'll see it more uh, we may see and how to do it even when we see the jenkins and all uh, then we'll also see why maven is relevant in this case okay okay yeah good question uh, yeah sir uh, assertion or uh, jnet uh, Test 
सो सी थोड़ा फास्ट हो रहा था इसके वजह से वो ओके ओके सो सी to bring j unit things in your project you need to first of all add a dependency okay you just how you add a dependency just by just by putting it here in the pom file this is your project object model file this is nothing but a configuration file a file which instructs maven how to manage your project right so you will be putting this here so that the maven knows that this project that is automation framework hyphen delete this project requires a specific dependency A specific library called a J unit. So first of all, first and foremost, you will do this. Once you are done with it, then you, as I said, you go here, you go to Maven and do a reload project, or you just run a Maven command, or you just go here. From here also, you can just go here, life cycles, click on install, or click on compile. Then also it 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 maintains your um, downloads your uh, dependency, and some in most cases it, it happens automatically also. Um, so. There are three different ways to do it uh, to install this dependency in your project. Once this is done, then you are good to go. That means when you open the browser, uh, sorry, you open the create a test case. You write the method there, and on top of the method, you enter the test annotation on top of it. Once you write the test annotation on top of it, J J unit understands that this is a test case. This is what it needs to execute. If you don't add it here, for example, if I just comment it, and I comment this as well. and i just do a right click then there's nothing coming you see there's no option to run it because neither it has main method nor it has any j unit framework if at the moment i do this now if i right click now it can be executed via j unit okay so these are relevant for j unit because j unit understands it j unit knows that these are the methods which i need to execute that's the only job of this test annotation so once you do it you are doing two things one you once you do this uh, once you add j unit you can do two things as of now first is uh, the execution of the test case automatic execution of the test case no need to have a main method and second thing is to have an assertion the facility or mechanism to add assertions is also implicitly is available with j unit so instead of putting in if conditions like this you can directly you can replace these lines with a much more simpler syntax that's all assertion is uh, otherwise you have to write if condition this and then something happen if condition that something happens so it's a good way it's a better way for your test case to uh, to be structured or organized instead of writing if conditions you can just simply put an assertion statement here so you'll write assert then you do a dot um, it's simple right you say assert you do a dot then you get something assert equals means you have to compare expected with actual and and breakpoint sorry and validation point on and, and checkpoint or assertion is usually contains only one purpose or has only one purpose which is compare expected with com, with actual what was actual what was expected you and you just compare for comparison you always use if condition instead of using if condition you have a simple plain statement you just use that statement to put it so i'll say assert assert equals that means i want to say i want to assert and i want to assert equal what expected and actual so if actual actual and expected are equal then it will pass if they are not equal it will fail did you get it now yes sir okay yes sir okay. hello yeah yeah Okay. Yeah, I have one question actually. Ah, uh, yeah, earlier we have seen right in uh, in your terms uh, and all actually. Where can you say with a different uh, access modifier and uh, in your terms concept like that here, or we need to use like yeah. this auto test uh, like. Ah, uh, actually, didn't get it. You want to change this to something? Ah, uh, can we use like a private uh, uh, different kind of modifiers? Okay, let's do it. So if you mark it as private, then J unit won't understand it, right? Okay. It is saying it should be public because oh, if okay, okay. it's private, then J unit will not get though or will not have access to it. A J unit library needs a public method, and that's what it's. Okay. This will return any value, uh, like uh, instead of a uh, void method, can we use? Uh, string kind of not, thing not really it won't have much much difference because the j unit uh, won't accept any return values right this oh, okay is independent of the i mean see 
uh, how do you run a method right you to run a method you have to create an object of the class in which the method is present right and then you call yeah. the method but in test in j unit you are not doing anything of that sort right you're not calling this method anywhere to return a value of out of it this is just a method on top of it you top of which you have written a test and that is it that means this method will get executed but it is no sense to return anything out of it because it's just a method if you want a specific method which returns something then you can write it and then call it inside the test for example this approach will work for example i will simply say this i will say register and then i will remove it now this will work you can simply you can return something out of it you can say return uh, zero whatever value you want to return for example i'll say integer right and then i will say in x is equal to something now this is okay because this is not a test method this is a test method so there's no point of return because where will you return it right because you're not calling it anywhere isn't it yeah got it yeah where will you return yes, yeah because it's, you're not calling a method creating a method where we are calling this method it's it's being called by j unit so when you do a int here you're returning it to j unit then do what right that's the reason yeah. there's no point of having any kind of uh return values there okay okay yeah got it so i'll just replace the move change the things here okay what did i do yeah okay move it okay any more questions around this okay if, of course uh, everything won't be clear um, and uh, as i always say it will all only be clear once you try it but when you try it you will there will be an explosion of confusion that is what we want and uh, for for example if things are crystal clear for now that is also a problem right now it may be crystal clear for you but when you start doing it there will be an explosion of lot of doubts question problems that is the exact situation i want you to be in uh, which and that is a way to go that is how you learn so when you try you will fail feel issues it's good that you are facing issues raise it first try to solve it if you get a issue i always say don't just immediately ask when you get a issue spend at least an hour or two in that solving that issue googling it try and debugging this and that doesn't work after two hours of struggle then maybe post something in the group with a screenshot of course otherwise i won't understand what is the exact issue uh okay so now if there's no question around it let me jump on to the next topic which is page object model now before i move uh, in that direction i need to create a class okay so to create a class you all know how to do it right so i will actually first go and delete these i don't need these uh, two files now so i'll just go and delete these and now i'll go and create a package let's say i'll name it name, give it a name as let's say page objects and inside this i'll go and create a class this time i'll create a class uh mm, what is that what is the name of the page uh index.html uh let's say we'll say this is a sign up page so i'll say sign up page objects okay so i have this class now what really i'm trying to do is i'm trying to say whatever objects or locators are on this page I will keep those objects inside this class. Okay. And let's say I'll go to the next page now, register. And then I'm saying whatever objects we have in this page, I'm going to keep them in a separate class object file called as, let's say, register. Uh, register page objects. Actually, I should have named it right. So this is not register, this is actually the sign up and uh, this is actually my registration for 
form okay so all the objects which are dealing or pertaining to the previous page which is this one i have a class separate dedicated class file for that here and whatever objects are coming after this i have a dedicated class file for this here so whatever locators are coming here i will be keeping them inside its corresponding file class file now how do i do it i can do it in a very simple way i can i'm not talking about because there are different ways of uh, implementing page object model i'll choose the simplest one so i'll say by let's say what objects i have let, let's do one thing let me go back here how many objects do i have here i have find element by dot id then i have by dot id so i have two locators here isn't it so let me just copy these five these two locators here and paste it here for reference so i have one locator here and i have second locator here so these are the two locators i have here right so i will not be putting these locators values directly here rather i will be keeping the moving them from here and putting it inside sign up page objects and you all now know at least what is a class and what is a object right so what i'm trying to do here right now is to create a class and inside this class i'm going to put the instance variable of the locator so i'll say by i'll say email is equal to okay second thing by and uh, it's a click submit button for example and here i will put like this okay no rocket science for now right simple i have a class file inside this i have two variables and these variables are of the type by by is nothing but what a class defined where in selenium this is where by is i can even go inside and see what by is right so by is a type of the variable called as email and this is its value right so i am declaring as well as instantiating and perhaps this also should be marked as private to support our encapsula encapsulation concept so the variable should not be accessed directly from outside so i mark them in private i am saying by by email the name of the variable and the name of the uh, variable here so i have two locators okay now i need one more thing at the top i need define a variable called as web driver okay so i'll define a variable called as web driver i'm not declaring i'm i'm not initializing it i'm just declare i've just declared it here at the top so i have now two things first second now i have to have third thing so this is how this is nothing but a pattern so i'm trying to tell you how the pattern is organized how what is page object model pattern so the first step in page object model pattern is that you will be putting your locators here second thing is you have to add a web driver instance at the top not instance just a variable declaration and then third thing is your constructor so you have to create a constructor here you have to give it a access modifier as public and you have to have a parameterized constructor here web driver web driver driver like this then you have, then you have to initialize this driver with the driver which you are passing from outside so i'll say driver okay so i'll just mark it again the first thing you need to do the second thing you need to do and the third thing you need to do okay now comes the fourth part fourth part is what your methods fourth part come is belongs to your methods methods are the one which is going to be used by the users of these locators like whoever wishes to do something with these locators he will not be directly accessing it rather he will be he will be making use of these methods to access and perform operations on it that is what uh, uh, that is what uh, these methods would do they can all you can also call them as business methods or interaction methods i will simply say methods i'll give it give their names like this i'll say public and make sure these are public these will always will should be private this will always should be public so i'll say public void 
set email right that's what we want to do so whatever you want to do you will write like this here so these are your locator these are the operations you will perform on top of those locators uh set email how you set the email you will say driver dot send uh sorry dot find element and then you will write email here and do a send keys what you want to send what you want to set in the email that i will take as a argument here so i will say argument and argument done second thing i will create another method to perform operations on this so i'll say click on submit button in this case we don't need any argument we need this thing to be placed here and we simply say click so now i have two methods to perform operations so now you see this is my page object model pattern all i have done is what i have created a page object file i have added a driver then i have added the locators in the by format then i have a constructor which takes an argument as a driver and then i have a business methods or methods which interacts with these elements so for each of the element i have a corresponding method to for it uh, to perform any operations on it okay any questions here Okay, now how we will use it? Uh, Akash, yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah, this is another one question is there. Uh, I just want uh, if we are uh, writing methods also here, we have to write all the methods that we will be using in the uh, in that test case. We have to add all the methods because there will be numerous. There will be uh, many uh, uh, many means um, uh, like uh, click buttons and all the button buttons that all. For that all method, we have to write all these method in this uh, uh, page, page object page. Depends how many locators you have. Right now, how many locators I have? I have email. I have click submit. Mm. Now I want to yes. send keys to email, so I have a method for that. I have to click on a button, so I have a method for that. That's it. Yeah. But in real time, there may be uh, many means uh, huge numbers of uh, means uh, there will be. uh means uh, buttons and all that thing yeah so you and have to write for all all, the, all that will be come here only yes yes so okay instead of the see the only difference there is nothing new happening we already did this only thing which is different than we previously were writing driver dot find element things here now we are writing we have moved it from here and we'll put it here so if you have two locators you will have two method if you have 1000 locators you have 1000 method but they will be structured in different files they will not be kept inside the same file so idea okay. is that this page object this page is a sign up page it has only two rather okay. one two three four button right we are not talking about these two buttons we are only interested in for now this and this yeah. right okay. this is limited to only that sub, uh, sub page only right. yeah yeah so okay. for this file for this page we have a file So only this file will have only these two met two uh, locators and these two methods. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Right. Now, how we will make use of it? Let's go and modify this statement. So, what we'll do? Uh, we will not be doing this, right? We will not be doing this. We will not be doing this. So, ah, uh, instead of instead of doing these two things, I will do what? I will simply say, I first of all, I need to make use of these uh, these. Uh, Uh, i have to call these methods right so instead of doing uh, to call these methods i need to do what i need to first create a object out of it isn't it so i will say this is my page object new sign up and i have to pass the driver isn't it because this takes a parameterized const this is a parameterized constructor it means it takes this as an argument i have to pass it otherwise it will give me compile time error so i have passed it here like this and then i'll say sign up dot set email what is the email i have to set this thing and then i will say sign up dot click on submit button so i can get away with these i don't have to have this i don't have to have this i don't have to have this now you tell me is my test case cleaner right uh it looks cleaner all i have to do is to call these two methods and now if anyone is reading it it will know what's happening 
so i have moved the complexity from my test case to the page object model file this is how pattern works this is how pattern demands of you to do and this solves a lot of problems when your project scales it becomes bigger that is you add more test cases to it let's just quickly uh, do the register also so that you get an idea what i'm talking about so in the register also the same thing is present right we have so many clutter here i would say it's a clutter a uh, lot of find element this and that and this and that so instead of doing all of this i'll just move them from here uh i think we have these many so i'll just move it from here place it here just for reference i'll just comment it otherwise we'll keep on showing error i'll just quickly let me just copy paste few things from here so the same thing will happen here right you have to have driver you have to have constructor constructor i'll go and change and then the and then you have to keep changing making changes in the locators you have to add locators in the by format here so you already have by formats here you all have to do is just copy things here and uh, paste it let me do it it will take some time but it's okay it's worth spending i'm just moving my locators here uh you don't try to copy paste you try to type it out it's better that way uh, it gives you more practice so uh email address then phone then radio it's a bigger uh radio what else okay cricket and then i have this one and then i have skills okay so skills okay now let me give them names so i'll say this is my first name this is my last name i'm giving name to my, my locators here okay uh, and uh, let me just copy this as well I'm doing bit stupid things you try not to do this uh, you try proper uh, typing I am doing something stupid so don't follow this I'm doing this because I don't want to type too many things so I'm just trying to have shortcut which looks like a mistake but never mind I think still it's faster so last name then this is my address this is email this is phone this is what uh, gender this is uh, sports uh, sport yeah sport uh, i think hobby or whatever then this is uh, oh this is i think hobby or i should say cricket simple cricket then movie checkbox cricket checkbox radio this is all text boxes this is uh, this was what this was oh drop down scales drop down put a break put a semicolons here Oops. okay so my locators are ready now of course they are not all because we have to have so many here uh, i have missed few things but uh, you have to go and add these things here uh, now let me remove these i don't need it now i i can start writing methods i'll not be writing all the methods it will just eat up uh, our time our session time so i'll just write few i'll write one for the drop down and one for the uh, chair for the text box but you have to create methods for all the locators so make sure you do that so i'll be creating one for public uh, uh, void set first name text box you can give any name any good name you wish to give it argument i'll simply say driver dot find element and then first name dot send keys and argument and i'll second thing i'll do for what let me do it for uh, gender also 
and because this i think is a click operation so i'll say public void click on uh, gender as male because i am actually explicitly doing it for male so i'll say like this here and then i will do a driver dot find element like this dot click and then third i will do for drop down so i'll say public void select skills from list and then i will do what i will say driver dot find element skills drop down this gives me what this gives me a web element skills list and then skills list i have to do a selection right so i will do what uh oh sorry i have to do a select uh list new select and then skill select list uh, list dot select value so which value i'll say select by visible text and this will come from where from outside right this is i think you might have few of you may be confused with it it's just the same thing which we did right so if i go here uh, this is what we were doing when we were selecting something we will first try to find the element with this id we got this inside skill list element then we have a class uh, like this uh, select class then we put this web element here and then we do this operation the same thing i am doing here if you notice if i go back to register you see i am doing exactly the same thing i am doing the skills list here using driver.find element uh, this is coming from where this is coming from here Previously, we were just passing it here directly, but this time I am keeping this inside a variable here, which is coming, which is I placed it here. So it's coming from uh, from top and then I'm getting my web element that I am passing. Then the steps are the same here as well as here. So I'm putting it here and then this is performing the operation. Then I will just remove it. Okay, so I have only written for these three. And if I go uh, here, I don't need these variables. I will simply do what or rather I don't need this also. I will again do the same thing. I will go and create the register, register page object, register page object is equal to new register page object. I have to pass the driver and then register page object dot uh, set first name uh, Akash register page object dot uh, gender as male register page object dot skill from list which is which is what uh, which is uh, analytics okay uh, i have only these three methods so i only i can call these but i you should as i said for each locators here you should have to have e a separate method so once you add those methods here you will be able to call those methods here and it will definitely look much cleaner and easy to call rather than putting everything here um, any questions so far this is this Hello? Looks better, right yeah carry on carry on Atiyah here how the driver will be uh, working here actually web driver you have mentioned so, driver no. from a constructor right here also you have assigned to chrome driver right no 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 so i am and i am initializing it here and then i am passing it here just just you are passing the ball now oh okay right previously okay. you were just calling it here now you are have driver here now you're passing it you have passed this as a ball once you pass it here it will be caught inside the constructor so it will be caught here and then this will be set to this will be sent to this driver by this dot driver equal to driver so once you get this here you will pass it here and then yeah. you, so just pass the ball nothing else thank you yeah okay so we actually learned three things today right 
we learned about uh, your j unit we learned about j unit uh, assertions and the third thing we learned is organizing our tests based on locators right so we learned how many three things uh, any doubt in this like can you are you guys comfortable doing this if you let's say have to do it uh, and it's uh, it could be it looks difficult but it's not uh, once you start doing it as i said you will face a lot of challenges you solve challenge and you move forward then you get next challenge you solve that then you move forward that is how basically the whole learning process works you know you won't get it just immediately quickly just you do you attend a session and you should get it immediately it won't happen it it doesn't happen that way if you think it happened this way then you are mistaken right so you uh, first have to try on your own system anyone wishes to ask something i heard something. akash uh, one question uh... hello yeah yeah carry on carry on ha uh -huh. and i just i just want uh, that uh, where the assertions are here means we have to put here assertions uh, right so right now i have put assertions directly here in okay. the text case itself but you can choose to move it to page object model or you can yeah. keep it here as well doesn't matter the purpose of having a page object model is to have a class which corresponds to the right page of the application and to have locators here as well as their corresponding methods what methods it's up to you you can also have a assertion method you will say public verify the title okay verify the title as or just verify the title and you can say void you can say string expected title and all you have to do is then move this statement from here and place it here and then expected title is the register so move it here here you simply say driver dot title place this inside title after okay now go back to your test remove these two lines simply say sign up dot verify the title the title you pass register much more cleaner isn't it remember the state of how your test case was previously and now your how your test case looks like this is what we want that your test case always has to call the method it should not have the hard logic of your test case your hard logic should be inside your page object model files or some util files or some different classes it should be kept there you have to abstract that hard logic and you have to keep your test cases simple lucid easy to read or readable so now if anyone can come and read my test case it's very simple it will say okay uh, it is navigating somewhere okay this is going to have set email it's going to click on submit button then it by the title and we can even simplify these things we can try to do it tomorrow not today so we can even simplify this where you don't have to write these steps again and again and again in every test case so we can have something wherein it will be uh, you all have to do is to call a method and it will do the job for you that we'll see tomorrow so your test case will look much more simpler the series of steps that's it okay yeah okay yeah okay okay any questions any more questions that is what was on my agenda for today uh, akash one question uh, yeah. does this uh, pom of page object model and uh, j unit goes hand in hand or is there other also that uh, that currently uh, uh, companies are uh, having uh, latest okay good question so j unit has nothing to do with page object model okay j unit is a different concept page object model is a different concept page object model is a concept which tells you where to keep and how to organize your locators j unit is a way how you can execute your task or controlling of the execution They're two different things all right 
So J unit usually when we move for, for, forward, uh, we will not be completely relying on J unit. There are other frameworks similar to J unit called as test ng, which you might have heard of. Few of you might have heard of. Uh, then there's a framework called as Cucumber, right? Then there's a concept called as Cucumber with test ng. Then we have Cucumber with J unit. So different frameworks available for you at your disposal to make use of. J unit is the most simplest one. That's the reason I'm using it here. Uh, once we are done with the concept of J unit as well as concept of as well as concepts of few more complex issues or complex challenges which in selenium projects in selenium project you face all the selenium library complex operations all those things once we learn that then we'll try to jump on to the next framework called as cucumber so our goal is to jump to cucumber because that is what people use in the real time project so we need to learn cucumber but before learning cucumber we need to have good understanding and a background about how the test network works that's the reason we are learning j unit it is an important test point even Cucumber uses JUnit, so you definitely need to learn it. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm waiting for more questions to come. Uh, in form in the external file, we get the JUnit uh, group ID, attribute ID. Uh, can you say that from here uh, you can pop, uh, copy this? that group id for j unit for selenium uh, we can uh, oh for this okay so, so you don't have to you don't have to write this okay so all you have to do is to go to internet just type j unit dependency just do this it will give you some maven repository.com that's where everything comes so you go here and you click on uh, any of the versions right now i'm using 4.12 but you can use any of these let's say if i go here and i get this here i just copy paste from here and put it there that's it okay i did for selenium but uh, it's not uh, after loading the maven project it's not so important as the for selenium okay so it is not coming in it's coming in red uh, no it's not coming in red but it's not uh, downloading the file the R file uh, okay, so you have you tried this uh, Maven Reload project? Yeah, yeah, I tried so several times. Uh, okay, uh, so maybe you can show it to me tomorrow, or maybe send the screenshot. Do one oh. thing, uh, send click a screenshot and send in the group. Um, probably you might be doing something wrong. Also, make sure that you have Maven installed. Sometimes that also creates some problem. Yeah. You have Maven installed in your system? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So try doing that and send the screenshot. Uh, what's happening? Uh, usually, usually if, if it's not it's not downloaded, then it usually shows this in uh, red, something similar similar to this. But it's not showing the Maven files in the uh, external library. It's only in the JDK files. Uh, so you you don't see these things there? No, no, only uh, JDK files. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so try doing this. If it doesn't work, then I said try from here also. Try to click on compile. Okay, like this. Try this. If this also doesn't work, then open the command prompt from terminal. Do something. Then try to run the Maven command. Okay. Uh, then this also don't work. Then go to the folder structure, and there you go and uh, run the command from there. Something similar to you go directly to the you go directly to the, uh, here, right? You go open command line inside command prompt inside. Just run a command like this. Maven and you should have, you should see something like this. If if you're seeing this, then then you have no problem. Okay. Uh, then the problem is something else, and it should automatically will be solved. If it doesn't work, then we'll see. First, okay. try these four five things. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Uh, Akash, uh, one question that uh, when we have to run from as a Maven from Maven terminal for using Maven terminal, we have to download Surefire as you, you have to run earlier. Earlier, so how to do that? Because I, I in my POM file that uh, file I, I didn't see that Surefire. Okay, Surefire, you don't have to explicitly put it. It is automatically involved, included in the Maven uh, POM file, in the parent POM file. So you don't have to put it there. I have put it because of a specific reason I wanted to show, but not today. So I just put it separately. But if you, even if you don't put it here, 
uh, it will still execute. It's already okay. there. Um, it's not something which is not there. It's already there. But you have to make sure that your name of the file has starting with test. If it, the name of the file starts with test, then it uh, automatically executes it for you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So try that. Okay, I'm still waiting. Any more questions, guys? Hello? Yeah, carry on. Okay, Satya here. You have explained, right? This is a simple form of a page object model, right? Mm -hmm. Can you uh, tell me in few words uh, what are the other forms actually? Give so some there, examples. Another, for way, can be. another way is you can use page factory. So, page factory is another way of maintaining these uh, page object model files. Uh, which is not very different than how we are doing it, but it just makes make use of some annotation, and uh, and and uh, and the way to initialize is using page factory. So it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't have much difference than how you're doing it. So conceptually, underlying concept is always remain the same. So you will do it like this. Uh, maybe I'll just quickly can show you that also. Page factory. All you do it is you don't create these buys and all. All you have to do is to add an annotation called as find by here. Something like this. So when you do this, uh, then it becomes your web element. So you have to put a web element here. And then uh, you have to do a few things. I, I think it will take some time for me to explain it today. Uh, I better don't do it for now. But this is what how it looks like. Maybe we'll try to do this uh, tomorrow. But it just uh, yeah you have, thanks Marcus yeah you have to make changes here uh, you make you have to make use of these annotations so okay I think yeah put them, we can, uh, let me do one thing uh, let me put a marker here and uh, when tomorrow we start we start with this so it's better we do this also I'll say. Page factory demo. So this also we'll do tomorrow. Okay. Anything else, guys? I see some chat. Okay. Uh, all right. If there is nothing else, then uh, we'll call it a day. Uh, tomorrow, same time, we'll meet again. And tomorrow, I would have some more more concepts to tell. And uh, as we discussed already last week, we are going to catch more pace now. So we are going to speed up our learning curve. Okay. Uh, so uh, be ready. Practice more. Uh, and these concepts which I am telling you are important. Uh, they make uh the, these are actually framework concepts i would say okay so this is uh, the concept which are required for us to carry on with this journey otherwise if you don't catch up good and on these things uh, it will be difficult for you to understand it and these things or more complex more advanced concepts later so uh, spend as much time as you can it's not the matter of art like i can i spend two hours can i still learn that um, don't ask these questions because the answer is no uh, the more you do it, the better it is. There is no time limit how much you can do. The minimum, of course, I told you 20, 25 hours per week. Uh, I always iterate this. You have to uh, have spend this much uh, time. But if you are not able to do it, then um, I mean, you are on your own then. Okay, enough said. Uh, then I'll close the meeting, guys. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I'll upload yeah. the recording. Thank you. Yeah, okay. All right, bye.